We'll go on to project four, uh, Screen Scraper. Uh, I'll turn it over to Nick, Les, and Wyatt. Thanks for having me, Brad. Let me share my screen. Here we go. Oh. So uh, I'm Nick, I'll be presenting for Team Scream Scraper. We came together this hackathon uh, a little bit disorganized and we decided to team up on a, uh, on a project. So I, uh, our team consists of uh, Kinson, uh, Les, Martin, Nick, and Wyatt. Um, I know uh, radiologists like to work in a structured way. So here's an overview. We'll go over the background. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about proprietary uh, systems, what uh, screen scraping is and what methods are used in this uh, demo. We'll give a demo, we'll draw some conclusions and list our sources. So background, uh, we, we as uh, IT software developers in medical information uh, informatics, we want to work together to improve healthcare. Sometimes uh, it, it doesn't always work out. Uh, in the older times, uh, PACS and other parts of the EMR could work together cross vendor. It was a powerful approach that recently became possible. And it uh, helped, uh, you know, uh, the EMR excelled in workflow and PAX uh, viewers excelled in uh, image pre uh, presentation. However, more recently, PAX vendors start, uh, start to stress the advantages of having uh, radiologists uh, report directly into the PAX. Uh, this enables them to do multimedia or hypermedia reports. So uh, Text, uh, make text containing embedded uh, images, structures, annotations, also uh, enable measurements on image to be automatically imported into reports. But in uh, we found that it actually sometimes hinders the integration of the packs uh, into the overall workflow of the EMR. So we need to come up with a standard to uh, facilitate that. If that standards is available, it's going to uh, reduce vendor lock-in, improve uh, this dissemination of uh, diagnostic information, also outside the hospital. So for example, a patient can easily correlate uh, a radiology text uh, to uh, the images that are linked. So I have an illustration of an old system uh, developed in the 90s uh, that shows uh, such, such an approach and a uh, screenshot of a uh, 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 a newer system that uh, also uh, followed up on uh, that, that concept. So the second background is that uh, these vendors, uh, the PEX vendors, they're, they're not always uh, that neutral in regard to annotations. Sometimes annotations made with physicians that are done a thousand times a day, they're very, they can be very valuable if they contain textual descriptions. They're uh, very useful for machine learning applications. Unfortunately, vendors, they do not always include uh, vendors that usually include their own reporting solution block out third parties from accessing the metadata while reporting. They don't provide an API. Um, they, uh, and asking for an API might cost you a, a lot of money. So um, even if uh, the measurements can be uh, retrieved after the study is uh, finished, usually they're stored in a proprietary database. They can be sometimes exported as grayscale uh, presentations today. It's structured reporting of uh, secondary capture or JPEGs, but they always cause some kind of uh, information loss because it's not live data. Um, <clears throat> and of course, accurate and structured annotations are a big deal. Uh, and I believe sometimes uh, there's no big incentive for vendors to provide this information as it is a key ingredient uh, to their secret sauce. So uh, I, I guess everyone here uh, loves standards, right? But what do you do if standards are unavailable? So feeling heartbroken without IHE, don't give up. We introduced to you SIM Scraper, bring interoperability to inoperable PAX viewers. <clears throat> so the project aim is to create a vendor neutral generalizable annotation extractor, and this without relying on the support of any specific PAX vendor or standards. Why? The MR should have access to data being shown on the, in the PAX viewer. And our why is high quality labels are quite essential to advancing AI and machine learning. Of course, this is not a tool to withstand the, uh, the, the ages because I hope and I believe everyone hopes that eventually 
the vendors will agree on an interoperable standard and we can better assist uh, physicians and patients. So why is life uh, screen scraping or data scraping? In the original sense, it's just reading the text on a computer monitor, often used to modernize uh, legacy systems. It can be used as, an, for example, an assistance tool, text-to-speech for visually impaired. So how did we go around doing this? What were the methods used? First step, uh, we developed a Java application that localizes a opened PAX viewing software. Uh, extracts the coordinates and the size of that window using uh, native OS calls, then checks if the mouse cursor of the uh, person doing the reading is currently inside the bounds of the viewer. And that finds the currently active viewpoint by finding the rectangle that encapsulates the mouse. As you can see in the example image here, the cursor is inside the viewpoint. The uh, software, the screen scraper, will find the um, the viewport, and then it kicks off the, ju uh, the juicy bits. So once the, this position is extracted, uh, the uh, screenscaper will start uh, recording uh, video footage of that viewport and will uh, uh, check for changes. So scrolls, clicks, key presses, pixel updates, and OCR ma matches. Um, we can do this because measurements and annotations usually have a distinct color, and we have a, a color selection wheel that you can uh, predefine for your PAX viewer. We can then use image processing like RGB filters to extract data uh, currently being displayed in the viewpoint. So here is an example of uh, the RGB subtraction and action. We can isolate very clearly a uh, measurement and a annotation and additional information on the uh, <clears throat> in the viewpoint. Not only annotations or measurements are useful, sometimes overlays contain useful information as well. For example, the image in the series and the exact pixel coordinates of uh, the mouse inside the uh, DICOM uh, uh, file. Sometimes uh, the, the number of rows and the uh, zoom scale uh, can allow for uh, coordinate ex extrapolation. So you can find the exact X and Y coordinates inside the diagonal file without ever looking at the diagonal file. And it sometimes gives the ability to detect uh, organs without using uh, any kind of artificial intelligence because the organs are sometimes included in the viewer. So you, had, you can also auto remove uh, organs in your report uh, section because uh, Screenscaper has that uh, functionality as well. So it's time for a, a little demo. Um, let's see, let me open IntelliJ and start. So once I select my uh, viewer software, I can select the viewport, for example, this one. And I can start uh, measuring. Once I measure, my software, or our software, sorry, will, uh, will localize this measurement and dump, dump it uh, to console because we were a little bit short on time for making a full-fledged uh, radiology integra uh, report integration. So it's just dumping it to our console right now. It detected the measurement and it also detected the units. It can de detect uh, uh, calipers, uh, surface areas, uh, angles, um, uh, density, and uh, a bunch of other stuff just by using OCR data. Um, so let me show you some of its other features. It, uh, it will also take a screen cap of uh, the current uh, currently measured um, you know section so the, the or uh, uh, an anatomy and uh, you can then send it to the reporting software to uh, more clearly indicate uh, what was uh, being uh, measured uh, and where exactly so um, I'm going to put this and resume the presentation. So what are the results? We created a Java-based screen scraper to export annotations. The code will be publicly available at 
GitHub, uh, we hope to allow interactive multimedia reporting between any pack server and EMR system using standards. Why is this useful? You know, uh, if you label data and uh, you use a clever radiologist uh, and a committed radiology, you can, you know, uh, get some very interesting results if you have that data available to you. So uh, we, the summary is we created an open source uh, Java-based vendor neutral screenscaper proof of concept. It actively uh, monitors the user's activity and whether there are mouse clicks on the viewport. That's when our software is activated to capture screenshot videos and then analyze it using OCR to extract metadata. It can be used in uh, workflows to produce multimedia reports, via, preferably via standards like HL7 Fire Diagram Structured Report or older still awesome APIs. And it can also, uh, the extracted data can then act as high quality labels to accelerate uh, machine learning uh, because uh, annotations uh, associated with text descriptions are the highest type of quality labels. Thanks, That's, that will be all for Team Screamscaper. Are there any more questions this or comments fantastic. regarding our pro uh, project? I really enjoyed the presentation, and uh, I think this is a uh, you know a fantastic bridge solution. I agree that uh, down the line, it'd be great to to have you know standards, a more standards based approach. But uh, uh, as an intermediate step, this is great. Um, uh, I may have missed it, but it, it looks like this uh, this works during kind of the the active interpretation process as you're creating the uh, um, the the labels and annotations. Would you? be able to potentially have a system, you know, go back historically and, and, and then extract, you know. Of course, uh, of course. Yeah. So, sorry to interrupt you. I did not want to uh, interrupt you, but uh, of course uh, this system uh, is using the advantage of the time uh, dimension because while the user is working, you are able to extract a lot more information. You know exactly, you're, he's dictating, he's talking about the liver, now he's measuring a lesion. It will go in the liver section, it will go in that lesion section of the liver. And there's a lot of uh, annotations that be, can, can be linked to that image. But when you do it in post, so after, uh, imagine you did not record your session, you did not use ScreenScraper, then some of this information cannot be extracted uh, in the same efficiency as uh, being used in combination with the reporting software. Hopefully, uh, I understood your question. And uh, no, absolutely, then that uh, makes total sense. Appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm open uh, for yes. Yes. Any quick questions? We got thirty seconds. Nick, um, what happens? Well, go ahead. Uh, Nick, so what happens when someone, when a radiologist? does the annotation, but then decides to change their mind. Does the system recognize that it's been deleted and eliminate the, the annotation export or respond in some way? No, right now it does not detect deletions because when you, for example, the system needs to be properly configured to detect that a radiologist is navigating away from, for example, an image, and that way the annotation will disappear. Some systems, even uh, after you uh, perform an annotation, the annotation uh, disappears and goes to a separate list. I know it's several systems that have that, so that might not be feasible. So uh, uh, if, if, if the physician, I, I just realized that that creates an extra workflow for the radiologist, perhaps. No, that most definitely creates an extra workflow for the radiologist, of course. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Oh, I have no answer regarding that. Very good question. Thanks. Thanks so much, Nick. Thanks so much, judges. So that was project four, Screen Scraper.